Yo, what is going on, guys? It's your boy, Sisso, bringing us a video today, bringing us a Photoshop slash Illustrator today, showing you how to make your own cool stock. So I don't know about you guys, but I think stock creating is like the coolest thing on the planet. Uh, it also helps you guys learn the heck out of a program. Um, it's also pretty cool not to always rely on something like Google, but what you guys could rely on, that was the best segue I could have ever done for this. Anyway, today's video is actually sponsored by Envato Elements. If you guys know what Envato Elements is, it's basically an element site. You guys can find a whole bunch of fonts, textures, videos, stock photos, stock things, like literally stocks in Illustrator later, plugins like our uh, After Effects are like plugins. There's so much in here. I personally use this. I've been using this for about, I'm gonna be honest, like about five months or so. They've been super freaking awesome to me. I approached them and they, they're down, they're down. And we're down. So if you guys would like to go ahead and just check out Envato Elements, it's going to be the link in the description down below. Please check it out. Please enjoy it. And it's super, super fun if you guys go with it. Um, I got a lot of my freaking dope textures. A lot of my fonts are coming from here now as well. We still got free ones coming as well. But just so you guys know, it's a super, super dope site. I would definitely guys advise you guys to check it out. But if I haven't talked about this yet, we're going to call this the Geography Map con Contour Lines. I have no idea if that's the coolest name possible or the dumbest name possible. We're going to find out. Um, but yeah, like I said before, if you guys are down for stock videos, just leave a like on the video. It's like the video. As always, it's sticker down below, which I'm thinking we do just like a little pack of like these really cool lines. But the way I just want to quickly just set, suggest to use them, excuse me, is first of all they're really cool for branding i'm just gonna say that um but secondly i'm gonna go with like like poster designs like I'm, this is last week's video um look at this i think it's super cool like as like a background element they're just super super fun to put in i mean you can do literally endless things you guys you guys will see this is a very basic one but you guys make different stroke ones different like dotted lines you can make them very intricate and i think it's pretty freaking awesome and pretty uh freaking dope i want to show you guys how to do them so of course uh i just gotta move over there i hope you guys enjoyed today's video we're gonna start off in photoshop then move it into illustrator and then that'll be it hope you guys enjoyed today's video talk to you guys later or tell you guys in a second see ya Peace. <laughs> All right, guys. So the first thing you guys want to go ahead and do is make a new layer, just like so. And then also the second thing is we need to make sure that your foreground and your background, your background, are both like black and white. So for that instance, if whatever colors you guys have, you don't have to actually click on it and drag it towards black or whatever. Just simply click on this black and white icon, and it makes your foreground black and your background white. So now you can go to Filter, uh, Render Clouds, just like so. What's a cloud, uh, the Cloud Filter? Of course, just takes the black and white colors you guys just had and puts them together in like a cool little cloud kind of gradient and whatnot. So what you can do now is go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So quick little reference to so get different variables, Gaussian blur, lens blur, or I guess motion blur, like radial blur, box blurs. You can guys can do multiple different variables of blurs to get different variables and different looks to your stock. So keep that in mind to get different looks, go with something else than Gaussian blur, right? But I'm going to say for default for this instance, I'm going to go with Gaussian Blur to be like my kind of like one I want to do, the blur that I want to go for. So Gaussian Blur, the radius, of course, also is a variable in how to get different stocks or different looks to them each time. So you guys can go to Motion Blur, do like 50 this time or 40 the next time kind of thing. Keep that in mind. They all do something different. So just if you guys want to explore different and multiple different stocks, you guys get it. Hopefully you guys get it. Okay. Radius. I'm going to go with 20 pixels. I'm going to press OK. So now you guys have is a simple, nice blurred background. Also, to get another different element, I, I've done this for a very long time now. I want to show you guys all the little secrets that I've got, right? Is if you guys were to make a new layer, don't do this for now. I'm just going to say for future reference, you guys would take your black brush, your your uh, your, uh, your black, your mm, black, your foreground color should already be black, right? You take a black soft brush, and if you just select them multiple times, something like that, you guys can also get different variables that way. So keep that in mind. And then you just take those two layers here and combine them together with Control E, and then kind of just go with that, right? But I want to go with that direction. I just want to show you guys that there are different variables. Just kind of throw stuff at you to know, like, hey, there's more than just this I'm showing you guys. Okay. So once you guys have this blurred background, I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to go to posterize. So posterize table is going to pop up. Make sure your preview is already selected and you take your levels and you take this little bar here and just move it all the way. I wouldn't say all the way, but move it towards the right hand side. So the more you guys gonna move it, the more kind of like these little lines you get, more contour lines, more kind of like corresponding traced around lines you get. Um, what I would make sure you guys don't do is go anywhere past 30. Um, it's been like my worst kind of ratio, but I would say like, you know, once it gets around here, you guys won't be able to see these little edges anymore. You won't be able to see these like lines that are being multiple because there's too close together where they actually can't even see a actual fine line or, or, or sort of line to cross around. Right. So I would say anywhere below 30 is pretty, really, like pretty good, pretty decent and a very safe number. So I'm gonna go at 15 personally. And I like how this looks for me. I'm going to press OK. And then what you guys can do is go to select, uh, excuse me, filter, 
uh, stylize and fine edges and then fine edges of course is going to find those edges that are tracing around each other and give you guys these nice sort of black and white lines so what i've also find out throwing like kind of messing around with me personally is sometimes the lines themselves aren't dark enough so what i personally like to do is take a simple adjustments tab here go to your gradient map just like so select this little gradient map bar here make sure your default is black and white or your default should be black and white if you guys just select the default black and white uh you select the black one right here on the left hand side then you want to click in the middle once with this little sort of like there you go okay just, just like so you select it right in the middle it should make it darker already just by doing that but if you take this new black one in the middle if also if it's not black for whatever reason when you click on the middle double click on it make it black also if you if you choose black and it's all over here you're weird um just like so press okay so this new black thing in the middle this little black little black pointer right you take this one and you move it towards the right hand side about 25 percent okay so it should be like 75 percent black and 25 percent white right you press okay and then you guys will see if you can just uncheck it and check it it just makes it darker very very simple kind of like thing to do um and then what you guys can do go ahead and do is you select the actual gradient map just like so hold control and you select the one right below it the layer below it which is the like contour lines and then you press control e to then merge it all together just like this and then you have this simple old good old one layer of like this really nice solid vivid lines that you can definitely see so if i go into illustrator at this point illustrator should be open for you guys you guys should have any document open i think it's perfectly fine um I always go at 3000 by 3000 but you guys can go at 920 by 1080 if you guys are not used to illustrator you don't know what it means or what it does it's basically a vector program so even if you guys made it like 20 by 20 right or 20 by like 60 or whatever right it doesn't matter if you guys scale it all the way up to 1080 or 10,000 by 10,000 that's basically what vectors is it just kind of keeps its same quality no matter what um because it's it's like a built-in it's through the program okay so i'm just gonna go at 920 by 1080 i know i have this, this 3000 by 3000 one open but just kind of keep it simple for you guys uh, I'm going to open up this 1920 by 1080 one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Photoshop. Use the movement tool, which is the first tool in Photoshop. Okay. Then you select your gradient map layer or not gradient map layer, but your lines layer. You take it, you drag it outside toward your toolbar. You pop it, hover it over Illustrator, right? Illustrator will pop open. Then you drag it onto this and you'll see this little arrow with a nice little plus button on it. You let go. Okay. And then you guys have your, of course, your image now inside Illustrator. Pretty cool for Photoshop to kind of like do, 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 do the little implement. Uh, eh transfer kind of thing you guys know about this i'm just making sure you guys know alt shift with the actual tool and the first tool again if you hold alt and shift you take this anchor point on the far right hand side you just make it bigger with holding alt and shift just move move my mouse now just like this pretty cool now you guys want to select the image itself go to image image trace i mean excuse me windows image trace make sure you guys have this table uh open for you guys uh for me it's now right here your preset should be on default your view should be on tracing results and your mode should be on black and white i believe that is default anyway but just so you guys know these are the, uh this is how it should look on the top hand side and i'm gonna go ahead and go to the threshold take my circle move it all the way towards the right and drop it down by one or if you guys want to make it super simple for yourselves go ahead and type in two five four on the actual box itself and press uh enter okay so you can take your paths now also if you guys don't see your paths your corners and your noise you just drop down this little advanced tab right here Okay, so you just take these and just move them all the way towards the left and the numbers that you're going to get is one zero one as those ratios that's the lowest that these can go to that's what you're going to make sure you guys want to have that be set to and then you want to take your fill you just uncheck that and you have stroke auto select uh once you uncheck fill if it's not auto selected just make sure you guys select on the word strokes right you go to your options here for the snap curves to lines you uncheck that and ignores whites you're going to go ahead and select that box and have that be selected and you want to go make sure you go to preview now and now select it um and this is where the moment of truth is most time i know mine's gonna be good but most times if you guys had like a weird ratio with like different colors or not different colors if you're using different colors not using black and white or if the black and white lines themselves aren't thick enough or uh dark enough those can be issues that we'll run into but for whatever reason just try for a second i've run into this problem plenty of times take your threshold and take the arrow key just simply go down by one each time and sometimes it'll pop up with like you know sort of close to what you guys had in photoshop but most times, if you guys stuck between, you know, that zero to 30 on the pasteurized or the posterized levels where there, it's not too blurry of an image, right? You guys will never run into that problem. But just so you guys know, those are problems that will arise and how you guys fix them. It's just messing around with your threshold and making sure your lines are darker, period, right? So now what you guys are going to do is you're going to do object and you want to go to expand, which is right here, right? The expand table is going to pop up. You guys go to object. You guys make sure that is checked. The fill is checked and you press OK. And what you can do is just simply right click on one of these lines and just do ungroup 
and ungroup again it'll always be twice for some reason you have to ungroup it twice to make sure the entire image is now ungrouped i've never had more than twice i never had less than twice so what you can do now is you can take the direction selection tool which is a on your keyboard and you can select multiple lines so you can just click on this line here i'll hold shift right i can select multiple lines i'll do this one this one this one this one what can do like just do enough to like kind of show you guys once you guys have multiple lines selected you guys will know they're selected by just seeing this little blue sort of arrow or not blue arrow but blue lining of it right you guys go to window you guys go to stroke and then you guys just take your weight and just put it up to like six or something like that just make it thicker than what the other lines were which are they are two by the way yeah as you saw the default was on two right if i uncheck the canvas you can see that some lines are super super thin some lines are super super thick and it kind of gives this really cool weight contrast you guys can play with this like a crap ton you can take the entire thing you can be like hey i'll make all of these 1.2 to make sure it's 1.2 right and you can go to these and be like hey i want to make sure some of these lines that are going all the way through the actual canvas are just gonna be thicker so thicker than one is or thicker than 1.2 is anything thicker than 1.2 i'll just say for instance for weight on these selected lines you see some of them are four the ones i just selected and the other lines are 1.2 uh what you can also do is select the path and use dashed lines so what this is pretty cool so i have for now right now default on five uh, 40 5, 40. so if these little dash dots and little boxes are if you guys read below it it's the amount of dashes and the gap dashes and gap so if i said hey i want more of a longer dash i would say hey let's put 20 in for the dashes press enter you get a longer line but your gap is still 40. let's say hey i want to be 20 gap on the other one right i'll just do hey make sure this is now 20 oops select make sure whenever you guys are messing around with uh tables and settings and whatnot make sure something is selected okay right i'm gonna go here to the gap and just do this one on 20 right so some are gonna be 40 here and the other one's gonna be 20 40 20 40 20 and it'll rotate so keeping that in mind you guys can go to other different like sh like lines right go to dash lines i'm gonna say hey i want my dash line to be super short put it on five the other dash line be super short put it on five and then for the gap being super big i don't want it to be super big i'll say hey 15 on the actual gaps right and you get this really cool like sort of like you'll get different results every single time i put five i put 415 um that's why i look weird there you go right to get this more like checkered sort of like almost like footstep kind of things you get some really really cool like looks to them and what you guys can do is you can go to uh filter excuse me file export save for web or uh saving for web of course you'll save it as a png24 um and save like maybe like a pack of them you guys are keeping a pack of like a folder or you simply just take the design when you're done highlight the entire thing right take it just like you did in photoshop bring it bring it right back into photoshop and uh, what happens is since there's no more, it's not like a black and white, excuse me, a black and white background, right? The actual image is transparent. So if I want to make a new color, right? And just want to kind of like just make it red, right? It'll be transparent every single time. So once you guys have this, if you want to ever fix anything, let's say you're in Photoshop, whatever, you're like, crap, I want this line to be a little more thicker or whatever. Uh, just simply double click on this uh, actual little page here, smart object thumbnail. It'll open it back up in a new window. And when you guys save this window, let's just do it for a second right if i go here make it thicker right file save i go back into photoshop that line will now be thicker so keep this all in mind i hope you guys enjoy today's video i know it's like i i, I personally love to do stocks i have no idea if you guys love, uh, love to i will find out on this video right here right now if you guys enjoy doing your own stocks as well it's a very powerful tool it's a very empowering tool to like know your program to know how to do different kind of fun little elements um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope, excuse me, sorry. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure if you guys want to see any other like kind of asset kind of thing, on uh, like I, I don't know, maybe you've seen it somewhere. You're like, hey, so, so how do I do this asset? I would love to do that. I would love to show you guys how to do something like that. It'd be challenging for me to learn how to do it. All that good stuff. But anyway, if you guys are not subscribed, make sure you guys subscribe already. Of course, leave a like on the video. Two likes on the video is secret down below, which almost like could be like a little pack of these that I already made for myself. Um, yeah, much love. I love you so very much. Made it to the end of the video. I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Do not keep you smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Enjoy yourselves. Peace.